going through the clips for this vlog and I realized I've either deleted or never filmed an intro. You know, just, just newbie rookie mistakes. Living life in the life of a noob is quite a hard hardship. Yeah, this is a quick clip of me saying, hi, I'm Meredith. I'm doing a week of reading books from Thailand. I'm reading The Sad Part Was, which is an anthology of short stories about modern Thailand. Um, I'm reading Our Dreams, which is another anthology. And this one is about working class people in Thailand. And then I'm reading The Blind Earthworm in the Labyrinth, which is a dramatic tale of these two sisters who are being compared to blind earthworms stuck in their own labyrinth. Cool? Cool. Good morning, everybody. So I read the first two short stories last night. So I'm on page 63 and I really liked both of them. A very, very strong start. I haven't read many short story collections. Um, I always feel like it's something I'd like, but you know, you never, you never know when you go into something. But I loved the first two in this. They were both very interesting, very vivid, just really stuck out. Like I was thinking about, especially the second one, what was the second one called? Wood Children. Wood Children was about this couple who'd been together for six years. They were married and the woman ha wanted children and they hadn't been able to conceive. And she had started carving these really creepy children out of wood because she wasn't very good at it. And they were like really awful looking. And it was really like disturbing the husband. He was trying to fill that void. And he was just failing at filling that void. And it was so vivid and surreal at like, capturing like the loneliness and how desperately she was filling the void and how all of that desire that she had to have children was now in something that seemed so unhealthy um i thought it was really interesting so yeah this seems to just be like commentary on life for the i guess working class in thailand that's kind of what this collection is about so something i decided that i wanted to do for this vlog series is support a small business or a charity from the country that i have picked and so for this vlog i supported a etsy store i'll link it down below which has handcrafted little ceramic figurines and so i brought these ones so i got this little teapot which is so cute and it even has like the like the lid comes off and it is so sweet and it's just beautiful and they're like hand painted and then i got these little tigers they came in a set and they are so so cute again handmade hand painted and they are just so cute. So yeah, I'm wanting to get little things to put on my bookshelves um, just to remember the memories of doing these vlogs and again, supporting uh, people in that country. So yeah, I will link the Etsy store down below. They even had Tasmanian tigers, which was just so cool. I really wanted to get those, but I wanted to get something that's like from that country and obviously Thailand have tigers. So I thought, why the hell not? So yeah, over time, after I do these vlogs, hopefully I have lots of little cute memories on my shelves in little crafts. So yeah, just thought I would show those off and I'm in love. They're so, so, so cute. <laughs>
everyone good morning well it's like nearly 12 o'clock so is it really morning <laughs> lazy so yesterday i watched some documentaries on thailand i watched one that was just about bangkok and that was quite interesting that was more focusing on the touristy aspects of bangkok and it was interesting to see how much of the city is catered to tourism and not necessarily people's way of life. It does make me think about how COVID would have affected Thailand. I also watched a documentary about the, um, I guess like political unrest in Thailand, which I didn't really know about. And basically it's illegal there to speak out negatively against the royal family and you can face like up to 15 years in prison or something. So it's quite scary and serious. And it was talking about how a lot of young people are coming forward now and fighting that and fighting the oppressive government that they have there. It followed a young woman called Jung and she is so brave. Like she was um, speaking out at protests and she, I believe she's out of jail now, but I believe she did go to jail for it and just, so brave because it is so scary like she went knowing that she might go to jail like that's terrifying and still standing up for her and her people is crazy so yeah she's very brave and admirable and i'm ashamed that i didn't know about her so i'll link um all the documentaries that i watched down below and information about this but yeah it's definitely sad to see these things happening in other countries in terms of my reading I have been making my way through Arid Dreams. I am over halfway through. I'm on page 143. So I've read about maybe like 10, nine short stories or something. And I am loving this so much. I think this is pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to understand. I think like it's one of those books where you do have to think a bit. Like things aren't given to you, but it's not so convoluted and written so like whimsically that you can't understand it. Like I'm able to pretty much figure out the meaning of majority of these short stories. And even if I feel like I don't a hundred percent know, I've got like something out of it. Like I, there's enough for me to understand that I, I'm not just like left thinking what the hell did I just read? So the connecting factor of this short story collection is that they're all about working class people in Thailand from different areas and following different people. It's very feminist. And I think the most interesting thing about this collection is whilst it is very feminist, majority of the stories are in men's perspective. And I find that really interesting because it's almost like that choice was made to further convey that women in Thailand, in especially the working class families, are not really regarded as important as men. Like they're almost like second class citizens. There, there's a lot of stories where the women aren't allowed to have an opinion or make their own choices. The men come first. There's stories where you see how men regard each other and themselves before even their own wives. And I think it's really interesting that whilst a lot of these stories are covering how men treat women, most of them are in the perspective of men. I just think that further pushes that narrative. And I think it's just such an interesting choice. I don't know if that's why she did it, but I feel like maybe that's why. A lot of these sort of cover how these people are stuck in different things. Like there's one woman that feels like she's trapped in her marriage because she's never allowed to make choices. You know, she fixates on the fact that she wanted to paint the room green, but the husband was like, I hate green. And he painted a beige and she fixates on that. The one I just read was about an unemployed man who finds a bit of money and he just fixates on waiting for this person to come back and collect it. And, you know, he's stuck in the motions of he's got no routine, he's got no purpose, and he's just fixating on something so like, like minuscule. So it's definitely covering how these people are trapped in the motions of life for various reasons. I think that that's really interesting. It's definitely covering what life is like for probably many people in Thailand who are working class. There's a lot of talk of prostitution and the tourism industry in Thailand and how that's affecting the locals, which again, I found quite prominent in the documentary I watched about Bangkok. And I think that that's prominent in this as well, sort of talking about how tourism is affecting the way of life of the locals. Every story is very striking. Like every story has at least something that I feel like I'll just never forget. Like 
I think the one that's impacted me the most was the one about the man who works in the elevator. And he, you know, he's stuck in the motions of he's stuck in an elevator all day and he's fixating on like, I don't even need half of my body. Like I only use like these parts of my body every single day. And he thinks back to his youth when he used to be able to you know, run around and he was free. And he remembers this like little chick that he had. I think it had epilepsy. And the imagery of that chick will haunt me for the rest of my life. It was my ukulele. <laughs> I wanted to read out a quote that I really liked. Well, not liked, that made me mad as fuck. So this is from, which story is this? I think it's called Men's Rights. Yeah, Men's Rights. And this was probably one of my favorites. Um, again, not because I liked it. It made me very angry. And I feel like the point that the author was trying to make was very strong in this one because of how impactful the story was in such a horrible way. This one's about a man whose wife cheats on him and kind of how he reacts to that. He's kind of talking to the man who his wife cheated on him with and one of them makes a joke about, oh, we could swap wives, you know, rah, rah, rah. And he's like, oh, my wife wouldn't want to do that. She's my wife. And then he's like, oh, well, how do you know that? And then he says, after a certain point, you have to allow women the honor of choosing. After a certain point. <laughs> Disgusting. Disgusting. Hello everyone. I'm just here to do a quick reading update because Liam and I are about to head out for some Thai food. We were going to go to the usual spot we go to. There's a Thai restaurant that we love going to, but they're actually shut for like a week. <laughs> like, of course, it's the week that I was that I was doing this vlog. So my timing as always, impeccable. So we're gonna go to a different one that is still nice, but I don't know, the other one's just so good. So yesterday I finished Our Dreams and I don't really have like much else to add. I didn't really like the last two short stories. They were a little bit boring. I don't know if I was just getting like to the point where I was kind of done, but yeah, I didn't really like the last two, but I'm gonna give it four stars overall. I could like sit down and rate all of the stories and then figure it out, but I can't be bothered. So it feels like a four. Yeah, it was really, really good at covering, um, I guess, life for working class in Thailand. I don't know how accurate it is because I don't really know a lot about Thailand and what life is like there. But I think it definitely covered, you know, life chances and how limited life chances affects people's well-being and the choices that they make. So yeah, happy with that one. And I have since been reading The Blind Earthworm in the Labyrinth. This one isn't a short story collection, it's a full uh, story. This one's a story that is following these two girls. Well, it's 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 like, um, it says it follows two girls, but it's really only following the one and this boy that's like their childhood friend. And it's kind of following their life and the lives of people that they know and it's it's actually reminding me a little bit of normal people by sally rooney because it's like kind of aimless we're just following these characters lives this gets a little bit i find at points my attention is waning during this one because there are just points where i'm like get on with it i think it's because it's it's normally the points that are following other characters i definitely prefer just focusing on the um two main characters i do kind of Feel like when it's like talking about one of the uncles or something i'm just like uh no i was recently diagnosed with uh stage four i don't give a shit. at first i was interested but as it's gone on i'm like i want to get into more of like the plot um which like there isn't really any it's a little bit confusing but not too bad i feel like i can follow along pretty easily what's happening there's just a f there's just a few things that i'm sort of like i don't really know if i 100 percent know what the author's trying to portray with that, but I don't know if that's going to become clearer. But it's definitely the style of this author that things are very vague and, like, lyrical. And it's really beautiful. I feel like a way to describe this book is that it's beautifully dramatic. Like, it is so dramatic but in, like, such a beautiful way. Like, the way that characters are reacting to things and the way that the, their emotions are portrayed is so over-the-top but beautiful like there's so much imagery that just like moves me of them like coping with things in such a like poetic 
moving over the top way that I just really enjoy. And I don't know if that's the author's style or like a thing that's common in Thai like literature. I read the introduction in this, which was, well, the translator's note, sorry. The difficulty is rooted in the fundamental structure and extreme pieability of the Thai language, which loom over any translator's attempts to transform our work into the more rigid grammar-governed English. I'm really intrigued to see what the author's going to do with this attention to obsession. There are a lot of characters in this that are obsessed with like people or the idea of things or actual objects like they are fixated and obsessed and I'm interested to see where that's gonna go it's definitely covering like obsessive love and how that is just doomed to fail from the start because you have to have your own life you can't your life can't be someone else's because they're going to be living for them they're not going to be living for you and it's just like you're just setting yourself up to be unhappy and it's covering infidelity a lot and how that affects everyone it doesn't just affect those directly in the you know relationship it's it affects everybody a little bit over the top but again it just works in this book it's just so beautiful in the way that everybody in this is so dramatic about everything and i love it because they do it in such a beautiful way you know like i just I wish that I could be that dramatic when I cry, you know, but I'm not. And I look like this. You know, everyone in this book is beautiful. And I'm just like, I think I'm ugly. here to do a reading update before work. I finished yesterday The Blind Earthworm in the Labyrinth and <laughs> let's just say I feel emotional. <laughs> I'm blindsided actually. <laughs> yeah this was dark. Lots of trigger warnings for suicidal ideation. It goes into quite graphic detail so please be careful if you're considering picking this up it's not a light-hearted book it's definitely quite graphic and sad it was a very weird read like it felt almost like a fever dream like it was very dreamlike and it was just a very yeah like vague weird melodrama and I actually really enjoyed it in the end I'm giving it four stars it was compelling it was emotional. I was very attached to these characters and the way it was written was just very interesting. It's not like really anything I've read before. Like the dialogue isn't written in dialogue. It's written in like italics and between the different speeches there's like a, a line 
and that's when you know the next person's talking and it works really well again it adds to that like fever dream atmosphere and yeah it just worked really well I think the reason that I'm not giving this higher rating is because I just didn't love that it kept going to these other characters and getting chapters from them because I just was sort of like this was such a slow moving story like things progressed so slowly that I was just sort of like I just want to get onto the main story like I was so invested and it was moving so slowly I we'd barely get anything and then we'd be back to a chapter about somebody else and I'm like I don't care like I don't that's called blood it really captured in quite a graphic sad way how sometimes the behaviors of your parents can manifest in you and it can become a cycle of toxic behaviors and just it really captured these shit parents and how their shitness really just affected these kids lives forever so yeah that's that one and i have started the last book for this vlog and that is the sad part was this is another anthology and i'm not loving this one unfortunately it's odd it's definitely kind of one of those writing styles that's very weird and the stories are about very weird things like the one i just read was about this guy who was obsessed with this woman on the subway because she wrote in her diary and like the spaces between her letters were really weird and he like obsessed over it and was like super creepy it was weird a lot of these are pretty weird i don't think it's like bad it's just the this isn't my type of thing like i don't like reading about just weird things that don't really make sense or feel like they have a purpose it's just for the sake of being weird which there's nothing wrong with that it's just not really my type of thing so yeah unfortunately this one's not really probably going to hit the mark for me i'm nearly halfway already but i'm going to keep reading like i don't hate it it's probably just going to be like a three star but um i actually did like the first one the first one was really interesting it was written in such a cool way so the book started with like a sentence and then we had like a bracket and the bracket was like the entire story and then right at the end we got the rest of the sentence from the first line and I thought that was so cool. I really, really liked that. I thought it was very clever and effective. But yeah, it's been downhill since then, unfortunately. But that's fine. Not everything is for everyone. Hello, everyone. It is that time to wrap up this vlog. Please ignore that I don't look super great right now. I just cannot be bothered making myself look presentable. And I'm spending a day of editing videos because I'm going away next week. And so I need a bunch of videos edited and ready and scheduled to go up. And so today I'm just going to be sitting in front of my laptop. So I don't care what I look like. So um, I apologize that this is what you're getting. Anyway, last night I did finish the sad part was. And yeah, I didn't end up loving this in the end. It's... It's not bad, it's just not my type of, I guess, writing style. It's, is it surrealism? It's not magical realism, but it, it's it's where it, it's, it feels magical. It's not, but things don't really make sense. And it's all like fantastical, whimsical, and well, not really whimsical. It's, it's a bit dark and twisted in parts, but just nonsensical in a way, but not fully i don't know it's just not my type of thing there's probably a name for that and i don't know what it is because i'm dumb but yeah i just didn't love it there are a few that i enjoyed so it wasn't like terrible i'm gonna give it a three stars overall it says that this is about like urbanization in thailand and how people grapple with that differently and how things are changing and i didn't really get that <laughs> i i honestly may have just been too dumb for this i don't know but yeah, it's just not my type of thing. I don't necessarily think it was bad. But there were a few that I enjoyed, which is why it's, you know, still getting a decent rating. Um, I really liked the first one, which was pen in parenthesis. I really liked the disappearance of the she vampire in Pattaya. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, I really liked, I think I liked Shallow Deep Thick Thin. Marut by the Sea and The Crying Parties. So that's like a decent amount that I enjoyed. That's probably around half. So yeah, it wasn't like terrible. But I just think like if I was going to compare these two, this shit's all over this one in my opinion. But you know, we're all different. We all have different tastes. Um, and that's like the beauty of an anthology. Even when like 
you're not like a huge fan of I guess what the author's doing overall you're still gonna find well you would hope so still find some things you enjoyed and yeah I still found some I enjoyed the crying parties was definitely the highlight for me I think that that's a really good short story I don't know if it's published anywhere separately um so I don't know if you'd have to have access to this to be able to read it but you can find it anywhere I would recommend it it was very interesting um and they were they were in they were bizarre for sure but yeah that is it that is my reading books from thailand vlog these were the three that i read over the week i didn't love this one but these two absolutely loved i feel like these are going to stick with me for a while i honestly kind of want to up my rating for this one i'm not sure though so i really enjoyed learning more about thailand reading books from thailand i think that the way that these books were written is different from what I'm used to reading mostly Western fiction. So I really appreciated the different stylization and way things were expressed. I feel like the characterization was a lot more like melodramatic in these, which I just really loved. And like they were all different as well. I think they talked about different things and I could feel sort of, even though they were translated, I could feel a distinct style of writing still. So yeah, if I was smarter, I'd be able to talk to you about like the translation but I don't know much about the Thai language. So definitely let me know in the comments if you're gonna pick up any of these, I would absolutely love to know. Let me know some countries you'd like to see me do for future videos. I do plan to do one of these every second month. So if there's a country you would like to see in future vlogs, do let me know. I think I'm gonna absolutely love this vlog series because I really enjoyed these. They were definitely something very different, not what I'm used to, but still fit with what I enjoy. But thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate all of the support. Yeah, until the next video, I guess that's it. So bye.